This sleep disorder machine has a new function treating coronavirus. Developed at Leeds University, it slowly blows air into the throat via a mask. And that means that the patient stays awake. We avoid the drugs to keep them asleep. They're able to breathe for themselves, they're able to communicate. They're able to still interact with their loved ones where possible. And we felt that the time they spent needing support was less. This kind of ventilation is being used clinically at Warrington Hospital. It's hoped the machines could prevent patients needing more invasive mechanical ventilation. And that's a relief for many. Why didn't you want to go on a ventilator? I didn't, I didn't want to be out of it. And I didn't know if I'd wait for it or if I did. But should more patients be treated this way? Politicians aren't ruling it out. The clinical practice, how people are treated by the doctors, has been changing throughout this as we've learnt from abroad and then learnt from cases here at home. You know, this is a new virus and it has lots of unusual features. The government had asked engineering firms to help build thousands of new medical ventilators. But despite fears of a shortage, orders are outstripping the current demand. The company Dyson has been told the ventilator it developed is no longer needed. And as the virus spreads around the world, clinicians are evaluating mechanical ventilation. There are risks in intubating a patient too quickly and that there, there can be harms both from mechanical ventilation and from the drugs that we use uh, to enable mechanical ventilation. Uh, but there are also risks in uh, not intubating quickly enough. If people become very sick and we intubate them too late, that also can be a problem. So there's quite a finely balanced judgment. Some clinicians claim the kind of respiratory problems COVID patients have need gentler ventilation. As this disease advances, so too does our understanding of it, leaving clinicians constantly rethinking and re-examining how best to treat it. Laura Bundock, Sky News.